What do we got? What's the what's the coolest thing that you accomplished with the help of somebody else? H at your table. Grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that's Alan there. Dave, at your table, what was the coolest thing somebody accomplished with someone's help? A lot of people would just stay on your parents. Their parents were there for them and help them carry Steve, your table. Uh, actually, a number of the guys were saying is because of the way their dad was that they didn't. It's kind of the reverse, pushing them. Sawyer, how about your table? For sure, that he's spent some time in Afghanistan. Correct. There was many instances when he was trying to raise savings like helping get through tough times. Wow. Wow. How about you, Mike? What's, how about your table? Somebody else go. Well, uh, your table. Do we have anything exceptional? Uh, um, John learned about cement. John learned about cement. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's your income. That counts, right? <laughs> a lot of us, we tend to be very self-sufficient in our faith. And, so, and I know that's been my temptation over my life. I'm going to just start out with my story. Because um, not every of you here at these tables know my story. And I'm going to go into what Woody talked about yesterday. And then some things that he didn't uh, that affect all of our stories. Um, when I was five years old, my dad became a pastor, and that was my life for two and a half decades. I went to church four times a week, Christian school, Christian college, Christian camp, Christian radio. Uh, when I was 22 years old one time, I sat down and did the math, and I calculated it. I had heard somewhere between 4,500 and 5,000 sermons and Bible lessons in my life. It was all around me. It was everywhere. I was putting myself in those environments that Woody talked about yesterday, but I wasn't growing. My New Year's resolutions were the same every year. I never conquered sin. I never got to this place that I heard other people talk about. I was saved. I loved God. I wanted to know more. I just couldn't get there. And no matter what the environment looked like, if it was casual like camp, if it was buttoned up at church, it didn't matter. I, I couldn't get past this ledge. And in fact, I got so frustrated after a while that I would just maintain the outside because that's what I taught, was taught growing up. If you wear the suit and the tie and you can sing the harmony parts and you can do all the things around the church to make everybody think you're okay, then apparently that's what we're all doing here. We've got this little game going on. And there were moments when God would break through once a year where you would see and go, wow, God, that was sweet. And the rest of it was I believe the right stuff, I do the right stuff, I, I follow the checklist. I go through it just like everybody else. What changed for me, like what changed for a lot of you, was an encounter at Blue Ridge. Uh, right after, right before I come to Blue Ridge, I'd gone to a very dark place in my life. I was actually working in international ministry. I was working at a Spanish church with my wife, who's fluent in Spanish. And I didn't speak Spanish, which is a great thing when you go to a Spanish church. Uh, it was Choose Your Own Sermon. I don't know if you ever read those books when you were a kid, Choose Your Own Adventures, and by the end of the book, you could create your own story. Uh, by the end of my pastor's sermons, I could create whatever I wanted out of the verses that I knew. And I knew so much of the Bible that I just depended on myself to get me where I needed to go. I was very independent, very, I don't need anybody else. I, I know all the stuff. I've gone to the classes. I could go into a church. I remember I walked in with Crystal. We were visiting somebody else's church. And the pastor announced the topic, and she and I played a game to see how many correctly we could guess in a row what his next passage would be when he turned there. And we were correct, and we were correct, and we were correct, because we'd heard so many sermons, we'd heard so much of the Bible. In, in grade school, I had to memorize chapters of the Bible a day, and it wasn't taking me anywhere. I had all this knowledge. I had... All of this, as Woody talked about yesterday, independently, I had all this self-will, self-push. I had all these environments, but I didn't have community. And so it's kind of ironic. Yesterday, I was telling Stephen, uh, we parked. It was really cold yesterday. And I came in, and I ate like mad in the cafe. I mean, we just, we just put down some roni rolls. And I walked into church, and I almost fell asleep. My, my wife had to wake me up. I was, I was not even paying attention. And last night, Will calls at 7.10 and says, hey, buddy, can you fill in tomorrow night? 
I said, well, what do you want me to talk about? He said, well, what he talked about this morning? <laughs> and I was like, oh, crap. And the reason partially that I kind of checked out is because if you've been at Blue Ridge any length of time, you've heard so stories of grace. You've heard sermons on grace, talks on grace. You've heard all about community. You're here tonight at community, and I kind of go, oh, I've already heard this, and I'm tired, and I'm full, and I kind of checked out. And the danger is probably some of you may have been there. Maybe I'm assuming for you, or have been there in the past. But what as I prepared last night, what I saw that I did not have before I came to Blue Ridge was exactly what Woody was talking about yesterday. That it's not enough to grow by knowing that there's grace out there, by having a bunch of determination and initiation and putting yourself in those environments, by getting in places that are called community, where you sit next to people but you don't look each other in the eyes. So when I first came to Blue Ridge, uh, I was just blown away. It went totally against everything I ever knew in a church. And actually, the first time I came to Blue Ridge, I walked right back out and never came back for three and a half years. The second time I came back, I said, all right, I'm going to prove this church wrong with all this Bible knowledge that I had amassed over my lifetime. I came every Sunday trying to prove it wrong. Within three weeks, I was in imprints, and I got rewired. And it wasn't so much what was being said, although that was crucial. I, I've never been in a spiritual environment, college or church or otherwise, that changed the way I looked at God and the church like imprints. But it was the fact that around this circle, people started talking about what they were going through, the things that hurt. I remember there was a couple in my circle, and they were infertile at the time. And the one girl said, I'm really having trouble believing that God loves me, that God has a good plan for me. And I would thought that throughout my whole life, but I would never have the balls to say that. I was so amazed that someone would go, I'm having a problem trusting God right now. And it, it continued around the circle. People were, this is where I am. And I'd never seen that. And then we would pray over them. And then we would ask them, and we'd write them in the week, and we'd follow up on Facebook. I'd never seen community. And so it's not enough to attend. It's not enough to show up on Monday night. I've been to almost every environment there is at Blue Ridge. It's not enough. I've seen people who've sat there for years, come and shown up, come and shown up, come and showed up, this, this past year, on a Saturday morning, a guy said, I've been coming to Blue Ridge for four and a half years. I've been coming to these events. And I've decided to give my life to Christ today. He hadn't engaged for four and a half years of going to all these events. Obviously, God's Word had been sown, and it was working in his heart over that time. But just because you're here doesn't mean that you're experiencing community. So I want to go over the three things that Woody talked about yesterday briefly in order to grow this year, which is hopefully the goal of all of us. We have a chair for Scott back here. Uh, he said three things. He says we need to have grace, we need to have intentionality, and we need to have community. He said, but it's not those things alone, it's the synergy of how they work together. And he mentioned um, not a passage in the Bible, but kind of a running theme to the, the New Testament, particularly in the books that Paul wrote, of one another's. Of things where when we get together, there are things we're supposed to do. That it's not passive, that we just sit back and endure that we sit back and pass the time, that we sit back and we even give our answers around these tables and we put our hand on someone's back and we pray, but something that lives in us, something that changes in us, 